I'm just teaching you how to look at the body. I'm teaching you how to think. Yep. And eventually, when you go see a practitioner and they try to teach you something else about the body, and you, you know that this is what the book taught you, yeah. you can have that intellectual conversation and stand up for yourself because you're advocating for yourself. Mm-hmm. Do you see what you I'm saying? So the next time yeah. somebody tries to tell you to buy a belt, you toss them to the corner. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Vibing Out with Texany. I'm your host, Texany, aka Mr. World Vibe. And what we have here is a community to give local voices a public platform of shared ideas, knowledge, and perspectives. So, this is season two, Go Home, where a majority of the episodes will serve as a guide for you to return home. But not just our physical house instead ways of returning to the best version of ourselves whether that be physical emotional mental financial or spiritual so ladies and gentlemen let's go home and let's go into today's episode which is a feature fridays it's a fan favorite in fact a lot of f's there now the feature friday yes it's where i bring guests onto the podcast and it's interesting because this episode is a progression from the previous two feature Fridays. So go and check them out if you haven't seen them already. This episode will make sense even more. Our guest today is someone who has taken the red pill. Okay, he knows the truth in life and he has went his own path in life that has found him a lot of peace and success. He's someone who's turned passion into profit. He took his interests, his hobbies, turned them into a successful business and now he has over 3,000 followers on Instagram. And like I said, his own business started from the ground up. So I'm so excited to talk about my guest. But before that, you're here now. You're going to enjoy this episode. So make sure you give the video a like and a subscribe if you're on YouTube. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever streaming service, make sure you're following the podcast and subscribe so you don't miss another episode. So thank you guys. And if you like the content and you want to see the behind the scenes of this episode, head to the Patreon, okay? The link's in the description of this episode. And for those who don't know, the Patreon is a service where we offer exclusive content. So as I'm saying, there's a behind the scenes for this Feature Friday and every Feature Fridays. If you're interested in the book I'm writing, How to Vibe Out, an ebook, which is coming out soon. If you want any previews, if you want to see the behind the scenes on that and to get a discount when the book comes out April 1st. Again, Patreon's your best bet. So head there if you wanna be more involved in the community and thank you to everybody who's on there already. So speaking of books, we're here to talk about The Blueprint to Recovery, which is a book that was released recently by my guest today, uh, Chris Araya, AKA Araya Health. So in this episode, you're gonna learn about Araya Health, uh, Chris's business, that he started back in 2016. It's a massage therapy clinic and recovery center. So for anybody who's interested in those services or that field, you will love the perspectives and the insight that Chris gives you. He's such a smart guy. He knows what he knows and he knows it well and he's so passionate about what he knows. So you're gonna hear that, you're gonna see that and feel that from the episode. So yeah, if you're in the Scarborough area, check out his clinic. He offers a free 15 minute consultation and it just seems like an amazing environment at Araya Health. So yeah, check out Chris, follow him on Instagram right now at Araya Health. And we're gonna also talk about his book that he released, which was an amazing read, okay? I enjoyed it, I read it twice. And the information changed the way I see nutrition, changed the way I look at exercise and therapy. And those are the three pillars we're gonna go by one by one. We're gonna go through and talk about. So you're gonna learn something, trust me, and you're gonna be able to apply it to your own life. So bring a pencil, a pen, a notepad, and be ready to learn in this episode. It's really informational, really enjoyable, and I'm just, I'm excited for you guys to watch this one, to listen to this one. So that's all I have for now. Hope you enjoy this episode. I'll see you guys soon. Enjoy. Today we have a special guest. This is Chris Araya. He's the owner and founder of a massage therapy clinic, 
Recovery Center. And so I can't wait for you to get into more about your business. So he's here today. Thank you for, for joining us today, man. Thanks, man. And I, I just want to say, yeah. Dave, the owner of the facility that we're at, yep. uh, Triple Element Theory, he was, I guess, nice enough to let us use his spot for today's That's, interview. So yes. I just want to give him a shout out. If you're ever in Vaughn, this is the clinic to go to, yes, right? It is. Yes, it is. So yeah, we're at Dave's clinic, not Chris's not clinic. Not today. So a little not bit of a switch today. up on you guys. Like we're not <laughs> at the studio either, so yeah. a little bit of a switch up, but it's good to have that context. Yeah. So shout out Dave. So thank you. So before I purchased uh, a copy of your book, Blueprint to, to Recovery, yeah. which is you know why we're here to talk about your your book that you released a few months ago. Yes. You know Ryan promoted it to me, so that's how I know Chris through Ryan, yeah. good friend of mine. You guys know Ryan as well. And he's, he told me the intro was so compelling because it, it talked about who you were mm -hmm. and he found that so engaging. Mm -hmm. So you want to talk a little bit about your, your story and kind of how you decided to create this brand of wellness and recovery that you have? Yeah. Well, first of all, Ryan's my the greatest hype man that I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> the guy, I'm yeah, going to yeah. sponsor Ryan in the future because he's always hyping me up to the point where I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Damn, okay. <laughs> so... Like I, I say, and I, I, I always preach this, but my business, Araya Health, mm -hmm. is an extension of me. Yes. So anything that, that I do within the company is mm -hmm. something that I personally believe in. So when I first started off um, in my career, mm -hmm. I guess, go on, let's go back to school. I, sure. I was always into fitness, right? I knew that I wasn't going to make it as an athlete. <laughs> we have that realization. Yeah, yeah that okay. realization came pretty fast to me. And I was just right. honest with myself. And I, I wanted to work with athletes or with the body in, in some degree mm. but I was uncomfortable with the idea of massage therapy so I, I wrote it off real quick because it's feminine I, it's what I thought at the time right yeah right? yeah for sure I it, it, it's not for guys or at least I was too insecure to, to admit to myself that it's a profession for everyone right mm -hmm. so then I, I took a year off took a year off of uh, high school or I graduated I took a year off of school in general mm -hmm. and I came to the realization that my mind kept on going back to massage it was the weirdest thing, right? That's strange. So then it? I went to an open house for the school. Um, fast forward, I loved it. It was everything that I wanted, and it was everything, and even more, because it inspired me to become a learner. So I, I dedicate a lot of my, my, my current self to yeah. massage therapy, because if it wasn't for massage, I wasn't the best in school. I wasn't the best that much, but massage just taught me how to learn, and I found my passion, right? Awesome. So after that, I got an advanced diploma in massage therapy, um, took some time off, took some personal training courses, yep, studied yep. Chinese medicine, and that's how I met Dave. Oh, that's how okay, I met Dave. Okay. okay. I, I, and my my education always continued, but what I find what I found was that there was this golden thread between every industry that I that I studied, and it always it brought me back to recovery. So fast forward years later, ten years into my career, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm so at least I believe so well educated in, in, in the subject of recovery that I had to teach people yeah. um, and teach people the context of the body and, and, and sort of shed, shed some light on how I think you can optimize recovery and that's what the book was. Mm. So yeah, it's just a combination of all the of, learnings, of, all of the my experience. Ten, of my 10 years. Yeah. So when you asked me uh, a few days ago, when did you start writing this book? Yeah. I could go back 10 years if I wanted to because that's when I, I would always take notes. I'm a lifelong yeah. learner. Yeah. I could go back 10 years but when I really started writing this book was when COVID happened. So mm -hmm. getting me back to the question, my entire career got me to this point. Wow. Yeah. Must feel good, man. I mean, and so what was the, the process like of actually like opening like your doors, like of your business, Araya Health? Like, I think you founded it 2016, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, what was the feeling like of just having that first client and just opening the doors and leading to that moment? So so here's the, 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 the thing. Yeah. We opened up our center um, when was it? 20, 2019? But the brand started 2016. Oh, okay, okay. So when I first started working with clients, I uh, it's funny because I got my car because I was driving to people's houses. I think I remember Ryan telling me about this. So, yeah, okay. I was driving to yeah. people's houses for the yeah. longest time. And it, it's wild because I looking back, I don't know how I went through that because that's not worth it, man. Like <laughs> driving to people's it's houses. passion, right? That yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to so so, I, I, so I, I had to keep going until I got to the point where I had enough clientele mm -hmm. where it was worth me transitioning that, that roster of clients mm -hmm. to an actual facility. Okay. Where in contrast to that, sometimes people open up a clinic and they have nothing, no clients. I thought the smarter approach was to invest in a car 
build up some sort of clientele and transition that. Yeah. So from yeah. 2016 to 2019, it took me that much time to build that clientele mm, enough right. so that I could open the door to, to, to my clinic and have it be busy where I can support other practitioners as well. Yes, have a staff, right? And have staff, part exactly. yeah, chiropractic, other massage therapists, acupuncture, mm -hmm. an ever-growing list of practitioners, right? That's awesome. I can't wait to come check it out. I mean, anytime. In your own place. <laughs> <laughs> anytime. And, you know, so obviously your team, you guys have helped hundreds of people, right? And, yeah. And I'm just wondering, like, because I've never sought professional help for, you know, uh, physical therapy myself. I've never, yeah. I don't know, felt the need to, even though it's so important. And that's what I found out in your book. I'm just considering people, like, listening at home or in general, the public. Like, do you find there's a resistance in people dealing with persistent injuries or chronic pain to actually come in and get the help? Do you find there's a resistance there? Yeah. Well, here's the stigma with, with therapy in general, mm -hmm. is that you can get therapy done to help manage pain. Mm -hmm. Your back hurts, your knees hurt, your shoulder, whatever it is, you have migraines. Yeah. You can get therapy to manage that. But that's not the end of the, the road when it comes to therapy, because a lot of the times, mm -hmm. Managing pain is, is just the bare, it, it's, it's a low standard to aim for because a lot of the times and how we sort of do therapy at the clinic is that we promote people to pursue fitness. So managing pain doesn't yeah. mean that you're be becoming a better version of yourself to pursue fitness. So we set bigger goals. We want people to be active. Yeah. Does that make sense? 100%, yeah. So it's, it's a little bit tricky. People have the stigma that it's only meant for pain. It's not. If you want to break plateaus, let's talk about that. You want to you want to hit PRs, let's talk about that. You want to become better at your sport, you want to just feel better, we can do that with therapy. So managing pain, yeah, there, there's backlash there because you're not in pain. You don't need it. Right. It's not about that. Exactly. Your body exactly. might, and I say this time and time again, you might be 100% focused here. And I, and I see your videos, man, you're killing it, right? You're, sure. <laughs> you're consistent. You're consistent yes. up here, but a lot of the times, generally speaking, mm -hmm our bodies are at 75%. You see what I'm saying? So your mind might be at 100%, but your body cannot keep up. And I heard this saying, I, I was at Good Life Fitness and they had this on the wall. It said your body's t generally two years younger than you actually are, or two years older, I should oh, say. Yeah, yeah. Two years older. So yeah. that's is that kind of in line with what you're saying? Yeah, your body's yeah, yeah. kind of behind you in your mind sometimes? Yeah, so your body's struggling, your physical body is struggling to keep up with what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So you might want you might want to be going to, to the gym, you might want to be taking up these new sports, Yeah. but my back's always hurting. Yeah. Or like things are preventing you from keeping active. Yeah. All that I'm saying is that let's get your body matching with what you want to do up here, yeah. and then I think you'll have a much more pleasant time living life and pursuing fitness in general yes, yeah okay you see what i'm saying so that's the like resistance that. yeah. yeah okay i want to ask because yeah just uh, i just wonder because like i said for myself i've never went in but i so i can't even begin to know personally what that experience is like but it sounds like you guys really encompass health in a really yeah. full way of thinking so i appreciate that so i i think yeah so i think pain management is just the touch it yes. can definitely make you better more than you might realize because you've had your body your entire life obviously yes so sometimes you don't know what you should be improving on because you haven't reached out for that support yet mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying yes take the plunge man that's what's about take, take the plunge <laughs> so i'm really excited to get into your to your book here yeah. blueprint to recovery cool, cool. guys i really suggest you know you guys check it out check out the book follow chris on uh, on instagram and you'll find more information there so i really i can't forget the analogy you made about mm -hmm. the book we were talking about the book and you said it's comparable to a song you know you can oh, listen yeah, to it yeah. you can enjoy it a few times as a general resource like a song or you know one day the content hits differently so you said for this example if you have an injury or chronic pain so it'll hit differently one day yeah in your opinion how are you able to create a reading experience that caters to to different types of people you know what was that book creation process like yeah, uh, so yeah, good, you're good, man. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I just want to know, right? Um, so it, it's not like, well, first of all, I, I, I took courses to make me a better writer because I wanted to write not in a uh, logical way that appeals to like the mind, mm. but I, I, I think a way that I chose to write was something that appealed to the general mass because it was a storytelling format. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. But more than that, I, I think where people might they're gonna really enjoy it is because it's your own perspective that you project onto the contents. So that's why I say the analogy to a song. You might read the book once, mm -hmm. and it's pure facts. It's kind of, it's a good book, it teaches you about the body, 
But as soon as you go through an injury, you might read the same contents again, and all of a sudden it's to like exactly, yeah. you're in, you hear a song that's that's, that's that, that, that your favorite musician sings about being in love, and then you fall in love and you hear that same song, and it's like that song mm-hmm. speaking to you. Yes, exactly. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Of course, of course. And it's like last night I was listening to the Beatles, right? Beautiful music, but they sing they sing about anything and everything with their lyrics. And then I, I find myself relating to some of the lyrics in a different way that I, two months ago, I heard that same song and it was just a song. Mm-hmm. Same thing for the contents. It's what you're going through. You will find it in this book because this book was written from a human perspective. What I went through in my 10 years of being a therapist, what my clients have gone through, and I laid it out in a way that I think is so easily and presentably packaged yep. that I think people are just going to have a good time digesting it. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because you brought up that 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 book, and I want to just that book talk like Ted, how mm. it talks about in, improving your public speaking, yes, 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 and yes. you mentioned storytelling as a big part of what you were trying to do with this book. So mm. has that book like how how? And you said you read that book twenty, think, times. 20 <laughs> times, yeah. So how is that book really contributed to your yeah. storytelling abilities and just your public speaking? How has that book help helped you yeah. in your life? So that book I recommend to right. everyone and any and anyone. Mm. So a personal goal of mine, and this is something I, I don't share to everyone, and it's so beyond my character, because mm-hmm. I'm not an, an extroverted guy. Like, I'm learning to be more of a presentable, stage-speaking person. Yeah, sure. Putting out a book, making, being on podcasts and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but in the future, mm-hmm. I want to have my own TV show. Oh. Yeah, I want to have my own TV show, whether it's... Like, more than just YouTube. I want to be on a platform where I teach people, right? Of course. And I have this unique way that I'm kind of molding in my mind of how I want to teach. Mm-hmm. But that book helps me realize what it is I have to do. Because mm. it teaches you how to present. teaches you how to project your voice. It yep. teaches yep. you why the greatest speeches in the world, or at least on TED Talk, why they were so effective. Mm-hmm. So for me... Similar to what I just said, if, I, if I'm going through something and I, I can't overcome this ability to present something and I, I'm, I'm stuck on it, mm-hmm. I listen to the book 20 times and it has a different meaning every time to me. 20 times, that's... I mean, you have to take away something and... I'll tell you, it's probably away. higher than 20. <laughs> <laughs> it's higher than 20. For sure, that's fine. <laughs> it's a good book, I recommend it, guys. Talk like Ted, so... Talk like anyways, Ted. let's go back to your book. I just wanted to ask yeah, how that book okay. affected you. What's going on, guys? Hope you're enjoying the episode. I'm just here to offer you something really amazing, something that has impacted me really in a positive way, and I'm excited to share with you. And it's called the Link Up Card, okay? Now, it's a physical card that you tap onto someone's phone, or they can tap this card to their phone, and it opens up all your links to all your business pages, any web page that you wanna bring them to, whether it's products, services, social media, anything. You tap this to someone's phone and it gives access to everything. I'll demonstrate this in a, in a later episode, but I wanted to share this with you now. If you're interested in this kind of product, which it's really revolutionized the way I revolutionized revolution. It's changed the way I do business, the way I network with people and everyone I show this card to, they're like amazed. They're like, whoa, how does it do that? They're looking at the technology. It's just a card but it does so much for you and if you're interested in getting a link up card head to the link in the description of this podcast use my coupon code so you save 20 percent and yeah you'll just enjoy this card a lot and i actually want to shout out chris the guest on this podcast for getting his own card and he's using it as well so i mean it's just an amazing product for anybody who's doing business meeting people as we go out into the world eventually right (laughs) these are going to be very useful for us so yeah just want to give you guys that uh, cool product and enjoy the rest of the episode let's start with the structural i don't get it right structural performance therapy framework on which the book's kind of founded on the three pillars Um, and and i just want to know is that something that you guys created or is that something that's already existed Mm. i I want to know that that. can you talk about that framework a little bit so, um, within my 10 years of being a therapist, mm-hmm. uh, I definitely took parts of certain systems and frameworks and ideologies and methodologies that I think I enjoyed, mm. and I packaged it into what the book is. So I can tell you where I got my influences from, mm-hmm. but in terms of this, um, in terms of a system that focuses on your off-season, on your recovery season, on, on, it's not the glamorous part of your training, 
No. That's where I want to put my attention towards. So is there a lot of systems that do this? I haven't seen it, man. That's why I created it. Because there, yeah, okay. there was a void in the, in the industry that I wasn't really getting information out of. So I thought I would create the contents myself. That's okay. Right? That so so, okay. so the okay. void in the industry, this book fits that void. Yes. It you does. see what I'm saying? It does. And then, going, going back to your song reference, like it, it's all encompassing. So one day you'll need a different part of the pillar. How there's three different pillars, right? That's what it is, right? And mm-hmm. I, I feel like okay. a lot of people put attention towards doing more, uh, training harder, my, my on season. But I'm the guy in the corner saying, hey, look, we have a whole system here so that you're off season. We can grow. We can get you better. We can recover. Yeah. So that when you go back into your high performance season or your, the season that you're going to start exercising even harder with more discipline, yeah. things are a lot more smoother because that's not what happens in most cases for people. They they try to do recovery on their, on their on season. They try to do too much in their on season and it's just packed. And when they have to take an off season and sort of slow down, they mm-hmm. do nothing. So I'm just advocating for this world of therapy, right? It's, it's a really important way of thinking, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's start with, let's go through these three pillars. Uh, briefly touch on them. And I want to start with nutrition. Maybe we'll go in the order kind of how the book yeah. is. Probably there's a probably it, formula for why you did it that exactly. way, right? It's, it's, in that, it's in that layout for a very specific exactly. reason. Exactly. And, and so nutrition, I feel like nutrition is where everyone's going to relate. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's why you chose that one first, regardless of how, how they exercise, recover, or whatever. So this section is where I personally found the most game-changing information. Yes. I'm serious. I'm, <laughs> especially food timing. I never knew what that meant. Mm. Food timing, you know, how metabolism is interrelated with sunlight, sleeping patterns, and fasting rhythms. So do you mind speaking about a little bit about food timing and why mm. it's so essential? Yeah. So I'll, I'll tell you right now. So within the book, mm. uh, I knew my strengths when, I, when we were writing the book. Yeah. And I... Nutrition, I, I know a bit of nutrition because I've studied nutrition in the past, but I knew I wasn't the guy th- that was going to write this caliber of content. So um, at the naturopathic college where I teach, I mm-hmm. teach massage therapy, there was a student there that we just really, we hit it off really well. Yeah. Uh, Quinton, shout out to Quinton. I'm shout sure he's going to watch this eventually. Awesome. Um, he's the guy. So these questions, I, I, I can vaguely answer them, but in the future we should sit down and talk to Quinton because he's the one that really like, broke down the science oh, okay. for this. Okay. But when me and Quentin originally had the conversation of what kind of content we want within the book, yep. we came to the conclusion that we wanted to teach people the primitive way that the body was meant to function. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. We, we did yeah. that with nutrition. Mm. I did that with the training section. And we did that with the therapy section. Right. Mm. So going back to daylight and metabolism, yeah. your body is a reflection, believe it or not, of evolution throughout millions of years thousands of years yep. so in this current culture it doesn't make sense it sounds kind of wacky to think that the sunlight and my body are directly related that sounds almost yeah, what we call like come too far yeah, yeah, yeah it sounds, it, it sounds yeah. like hippie science yeah <laughs> but look y- your body is molded by the food that you eat and your body's a reflection of the stuff that we went through thousands of years ago mm-hmm. it's not a surprise we break it down more in the book so once again i'm not the guy that's going to break it down because this stuff how quentin like the amount of information that Quincy can go into goes over my head. He's the guy that, that's going to do this. Okay. <laughs> but I'm super proud because we, we went back and forward and we, 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 we recycled the information and we kept them molding it to the point where it is what it is in the book. And I'm super proud of it because you can relate to it at this point. And it gives you an organic understanding of what the body's meant to be doing. Mm-hmm. And it gives you context and it teaches you how to think of the body. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? 100%. It, it's, it, yeah. And I, everything from like the diagrams to the success stories, all that stuff in the book really helps you get an understanding and helps you relate to it, as yeah. you were saying, that was the point of it. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, and you also, yeah, you also go into like macronutrients, energy requirements, and so I guess Quentin's our guy to talk to about that kind of stuff. So is there anything else in the nutrition section that you think people should know about? Is there any fact or anything specifically you think people should know? Yeah. Or should check out? <clears throat> so when it comes to nutrition, people have to understand that uh, you're, like I said earlier, the body that you have now is built off of the food that you eat. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what if you eat like, can I say shit? <laughs> Anything. <laughs> <laughs> if you eat like shit, what do you think yes. your body's going to do? Are, are you going to feel like shit? Eventually. Are yeah. you, are you, is your body going to be built off of shit? There it's it a is. good chance, right? Yeah. So we're mm-hmm. advocating for you to, you can make whatever choice you want. Mm-hmm. Let me just teach you how to think of the body. 
Do you see what I'm saying? Mm, so yes. kind Smart. of like you were saying before, right? Um, you almost described your following as like free thinkers, right? You, you, you sort of enlighten them and you, you think how you want to think. Here's just how what we're presenting it. Yeah, you know what I mean? For sure. If, if someone decides to eat unhealthy, that's not a bad thing. I mean, it's teaching you this is how, this is how you should eat. Yeah. And if you choose not to follow it, just know that these are the consequences. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If yeah. you choose to eat late at night, these are the consequences in some cases, right? Mm-hmm. You're gonna feel like crap. So you gotta eat good to feel good. And on top of that, if you're trying to if you're trying to recover, mm-hmm. you gotta make sure you're eating well because you wanna build a body off of uh, off of food that's nutritionally dense. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Hundred percent. Yeah, I learned so much about nutrition. I can't speak enough about just the the mindset, the the philosophy and. I get what you're saying where you're just laying out information and saying, you know, take it how you want. But you look at the information, you immediately put it back to yourself. Persuasive. It's a, it's a reflection <laughs> on yourself. It is. Like so, I said, yeah. it's very persuasive. Mm-hmm. Uh, not in a bad way, but it, we really wanted to teach people the primitive functions of the body. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So it's a, it's so, a fresh take on, on this. Yeah, so your body in the context of it thousands of years ago makes more sense. Our bodies in, the, in, in this culture, mm. it's hard to make sense of it. But that's where we're going wrong. We need to understand this world before this world makes sense. Yep, yep. Take it a step back to move a step forward. There we go. Sense. There we go, man. <laughs> um, okay, so let's move on to the exercise pillar. Yes. And that's, you know, so we all have a different relationship with exercise, how we move. You start with the idea of integrated movement. Uh, and I found this important because you made a distinction, you know, how we're, when we're young, mm. we're curious, we play. Yeah. When we get older, we kind of kind of lose that various ways of self-expressing ourselves with our body we kind of just i think we're kind of moving towards being home more we kind of have this still kind of we don't really move as much as as we have before and we kind of have a single inactive lifestyle i feel like some people live that unfortunately so what are the risks in that situation for for those people who don't find ways of self-expressing themselves Mm. as much with their body so like living a sedentary lifestyle right essentially yeah well it's hard to answer that but for example, what, how do you feel when you, when you spend all day on the couch and, and you go and you sit up and your body is kind of yeah, it's just, acting up? You just hear everything crack. Everything's <laughs> cracking, right? So now imagine you live a life where it's nine to five and you go home, you do, you do the same thing. You leave your work, you're on the computer all day, you go home, you're on the computer mm-hmm. and you go like lay down in your bed. It's a very linear way of living, right? So going back to that one uh, part of the book, when we're young, when we're kids, we yeah. play to express, we play to, to exercise. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that body type is just a, it breeds a good feeling, okay, to be able to move a lot. Mm-hmm. But as we age, our culture has a really weird way of suppressing that, 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 that playfulness, right? Yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying as an adult go play tag, but what I'm saying is that when you do too much of the same things, your body starts to lose it. So yeah. in therapy, we say, if you don't use it, you lose it, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. you lying on the couch all day, if you don't move well, you're gonna slowly lose your body's natural ability, which is to be dynamic, which is to play, which is to run, which is to climb stuff, which is to do all this crazy shit. Yeah. You're gonna lose it, man. Yeah. Now fast forward your entire life, you're 55 and you've done none, none of that. How are you gonna feel? You're gonna feel good? No. <laughs> you're gonna feel like you're, you're gonna feel like a 55 year old guy exactly and and, yeah. and I, I think just by getting someone to not and I'm not saying go to the gym I'm saying just move more yeah because when we move your tissue hydrates itself it's the craziest thing science says that when you move your connective tissue water and the hydrogen molecules they 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 start getting replenished mm-hmm. when you move more your joints nourish themselves when you move more the connective tissue and the muscles stretch that's just by moving so I'm not saying work out. I'm Go saying to the gym, lift weights. No. It's, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm saying no. to take up tai chi, take up like, yoga, whatever you want. I'm just saying express your body more. Yes. And eventually the feeling, the feeling of feeling good will come back. Yeah. And that's what integrated movement teaching your body how to move in a way where you find comfort within your body. Mm-hmm. You ever heard of the saying "movement is medicine"? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I believe. Have you ever heard of the phrase "motion is lotion"? <laughs> no, but I see where we're going. Just, let's just keep going like that. Exactly. Anything that rhymes. Yeah, there we go. Um, so, how can someone like in, begin to incorporate the movement into their lives? Like, what's it going to take for a person to just find a way to move? I think you're saying just find ways for yourself that you enjoy. So it doesn't mm. have to be the gym. It doesn't have to be lifting weights. It's just 
wherever you can find time in your day. I think personally, the biggest thing is doing what you like to do. Moving in a way yes. that, that is for you. Maybe it's yeah, a walk, it's maybe it's something with your friends or with a social aspect. What do you think for yourself? How do you incorporate that in well, people's lives? Well, there, there's two demographics here, okay? There's someone that's dealing with an injury, mm -hmm. and there's so they're dealing with an injury and that's why they're not moving, mm -hmm. or they're just not moving because of lifestyle choices, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's in therapy, there's what we call active care and passive care, okay? okay. Yeah. Passive care meaning you cannot move, so come see a massage therapist because we can move the tissue in the body, we can do stuff to you where your body feels like it's stretching and moving itself. Yeah. That's passive care. Active, how do you incorporate active an active lifestyle? You gotta just make the right choices. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. uh, me being a, a father of two kids, one of them's 14, the other one's nine months old, you gotta just make the choice. And I, I get it, we all work hard, but being self-employed, uh, the, the work never stops. And mm -hmm. if, you don't, if I don't make the choice to just commit to working out, I don't know what I was doing. Be 55, yeah. like you said. Yeah, yeah, you, you feel like you're 55 in a 31-year-old body. Right, yeah, see, that's, we don't want to have that for anyone. Yeah. <laughs> and then the part of the exercise pillar that, that seemed crucial to me and, and is the recovery versus adaptation. I think that's a part that you've kind of refined in your work as I'm coming to learn about, about you more. And let me quote this. I want to make sure I quote this properly. You get to control when you recover and you differentiate between states of deficiency, recovery, and adaptation. Yeah, sounds, and sounds good. <laughs> I feel as though a lot of people who have played sports, yeah. you know, or just have, you know, lift weights in general, I feel like they've, we've all suffered from injuries at one point, you know, and it comes from being unaware about these different options. Yeah. I think that's sometimes a result. So can you explain what these states are and how they play a role mm. in preventing injuries? That's a good question, man. Damn. Right. Okay, so... <laughs> So this is tricky to explain. Like you, you literally have to read this this chapter in the book to really understand it. Mm -hmm. But deficiency, right? Deficiency might sound like a bad thing, right? Because yeah. what, what's synonymous with uh, deficiency? Lack. Lack, mm -hmm. right? Catabolic. The body's breaking down. Mm -hmm. Malnutrition. Losing weight. Yep. Um, all these things that describe deficiency. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad thing. And I'll tell you why. Because sometimes in sports, and I'm not talking about athletics in general, but just for this example, I'll talk mm. about sports. Um, sometimes you're in a sport where you need to lose weight and you need to be in a deficiency state. Mm -hmm. But That's you true. need to continue to exercise, right? What kind of sports? Boxing, Muay Thai, what else? I mean, not every. it doesn't apply to every sport. Mm. But here's the thing. Without knowing, a lot of the times people are in a state of deficiency. And they're trying to accomplish goals of adaptation. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So now, so now, let's de now that's deficiency. Let's define recovery. Recovery is not what people think it is. Recovery is simply to return to a baseline state of fitness. Yes, okay. Meaning, you, you can probably bench press 225, right? Okay, let's just try it out. Let's yeah. say you, you bench press 225. <laughs> yeah. You're sore the next day. You go back to the 225 and you simply, you, you, you do the same amount of reps, sets, mm -hmm. that's recovery. You can't do any more. Okay? That's recovery. Exactly. So to return to a baseline, and that's needed sometimes, right? Because in some cases, you want to preserve recovery because your body's working so hard. It wants to drop down to a state of deficiency. Mm -hmm. This is where you use therapy and you use nutritional coaching and you use the right type of exercises to preserve recovery so yes. your body isn't dropping down to this exactly. scary state of being catabolic and breaking down. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And there's some sports where that's important. You just got to be aware of it. And the last phase, I guess the last one we, we talk about in the book is adaptation. Okay. This is the holy grail because this is where everyone wants to be. They want to be there. But they don't know that you don't always need it. Mm -hmm. Do you know why? Because it's very expensive for the body. Mm -hmm. Why? It requires a ton of energy to adapt, mm -hmm. meaning you're doing 225, okay? What is adaptation? Adaptation is when you get 226. You can get, you're a little bit stronger. Exactly. Yeah. You're, at, you, you're at 300 now. That Your body's growing, right? Your, your nervous system has recovered. You're replenished. Your muscles aren't cramping. You're, like all these things describe an anabolic state, Yeah. okay? Yeah. That's adaptation. What I'm saying in the book is that People are not aware, and with what they're trying to accomplish, they don't know where they sit, and they're trying to aim, they're, they're on a platform that's not conducive to where they're trying to get. 
Does that make sense? I feel like they're trying to go like this, but like on a graph, I feel like it would just go like this, 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 this. Like I feel like there's different it, on the way up. It's not just a straight line. It's it, not exactly, that. It's Exa- not. and that's exactly it. So now just picture this, just as, as a random example. Mm. You're in a state of deficiency without knowing, but your buddy keeps peer pressuring you to mm. go for that PR. <laughs> yeah. It happens to everyone. It happens yes. <laughs> It happens to me all the time, right? Go for, I, I don't know, whatever weight you want to lift, but go for that PR, man. Yep. Go for that PR. Yep. But no one's considering the fact that you were at work all day. for. The, you work a crazy amount of hours. You're stressed out. Yep. You're not eating right. You're not recovering. And your exercise program is not, it's not, re, it's not meant for your body type. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're here and you're trying to accomplish this. Answer. Are you going to get injured? <laughs> Hundred percent, possibly. Oh, possibly? No, no. Okay. I, I think he will get injured. There's a good chance. I don't want to sure. threaten. I don't want to threaten anyone. But what I'm saying is, there's a good yeah. chance you're gonna get injured. Yeah. I'm just saying, just consider these pillars as a crucial thing you got to be aware of because yeah. most people don't. Mm-hmm. Right. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. We 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 think we can just go into that adaptation. It's interesting. We say we want to be there. That makes sense. We all want to grow, whether it's like physically in this sense, we want to be able to hit milestones, achievements, PRs. But yeah, like you're saying, you, you can't just needed. keep going up yeah. You have to um, be aware of the different states. At least be mindful mm. so you can make the adjustments to get there eventually. Yeah. So that's why, so if I can just add this one last part, Definitely. that's why it's important to understand and have a game plan because you can't just pick like something new every every day of the week right yeah you need to have structure which is why we use the phrase structure performance therapy because to play off of that title it's not, it's not just structural in the sense of your body it's structural in creating a structural nutritional approach yep. creating structure within your within your exercise program and creating structure within the physical body and that's why it's structural leading to performance outcomes Oh, yeah. wow. okay. It's embedded in the in the in the name of the term. Very deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, yeah. that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go to the last pillar, therapy, because that's what you you specialize in. That's what uh, you've learned yeah, so much about. Yeah. And it's you know one of the first methods you touched on, and something everyone listening at home can relate to is breathing. You talked about that as one of the first ones, and mm. I think that's so essential. Um, now I'm a partaker of yoga and meditation myself, so mm-hmm. I reap all the benefits, and I I see how important like mindful and purposeful breathing can be what are some of the benefits that you found you know breathing and can have that science and research has proven and how can someone you know incorporate more purposeful breath taking into their lives mm. <clears throat> so there's this concept known as uh, breath selection I don't know if that's an actual I don't know if that's something I came up with or if that's something yes, I read no. somewhere <laughs> it's my turn so breath selection yes okay? People use the wrong breath for the wrong situations, mm-hmm. okay? So when we look at the body and we strip the body down to its anatomical functions, okay? You know those belts people wear at the gym to lift weights? Yep. Okay. Would you be surprised if I told you that you naturally have this this organic, natural, anatomical belt within you? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> crazy. It's crazy to think, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of the times, people that rely on that belt to lift, I guess... An, a normal amount of weight they're 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 supplementing for the fact that they can't engage their own belt so that muscle is called your tva your transversus abdominis okay mm-hmm. so the reason why i bring that up is because when you breathe and i break it down in the book with those two images of the guys in the boulders yes. uh, yeah yeah yep. Yep. so there's one image of a guy sitting and he's breathing and he's pushing out his stomach mm-hmm. to signify that his belly is pushing out when you breathe like that, that yoga breath, that breath for relaxation, yeah. what it does to that muscle is that it turns it off. It inhibits that muscle. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. So that breath is meant, so I, I coined it a, a phasic breath. It's meant for relaxation. A tonic breath, a breath where you're not pushing out your stomach, where, but instead you're sucking in, mm-hmm. that is the function of that belt that people buy, and it's also the function of that belt that you have internally with inside you. So what I'm trying to say is that why is it the first subject that I put that I put for for therapy? Yes. I put that there because when you can pick the breath that you want for the specific function that you're trying to accomplish, you're likely to you're less likely to risk lower back injury. 
you're more likely to generate explosive power within your body. Yeah. So restoring that is very important and teaching people that is very important mm -hmm. because when people go unaware and they use the wrong breath for the wrong action, mm -hmm. that's where the bath gives up. Wow. I would not I would not know that or be able to link that without knowing this. That's, that's but really this, is, this is interesting. It, so once yeah. again, going back to the, the purpose of the book, I'm just teaching you how to look at the body. I'm teaching you how to think. Yep. And eventually, when you go see a practitioner and they try to teach you something else about the body, and you know that this is what the book taught you, yeah. you can have that intellectual conversation and stand up for yourself because you're advocating for yourself. Mm -hmm. Do you see what you I'm saying? So the next time yeah. somebody tries to tell you to buy a belt, you toss them to the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's like you said, it's kind of like, it's in placement for something we already have. We are, if we're aware of how to use our breath, yeah. we can, we can tonic, it, yeah. tonic breath, what's it called? The to, so to, to activate that belt is yes. the tonic breath. Tonic breath, right. To okay. distend the stomach and to promote relaxation. Yes. Um, it's physic. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. And one last little fact is that it is in the book. Um, physic breath. So when you, when you breathe and you're distending your belly out, it's in the, it's in the book. This fact is in the book, but I'll, I'll put it up there right now. Okay. If you look at your spine, okay, yeah. mm -hmm. so to the that's the back of your spine, that's the front of your spine, all right? Yes. There's a nerve that travels down the front of your spine, and it's called the vagus nerve. Yes, you're talking, yes. 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 So what's interesting is, about that is that that, that nerve goes towards the, the organs in your stomach, okay? When you breathe, the diaphragm, as it pumps in and out, mm. will gently friction and massage that nerve. And it stimulates the organs to function better. How wild is that? So there is science to prove the fact that breathing does promote digestion. Yes. That leading is. to promoting what is the, the premise of the book? Recovery. And it's that's why it's mind, yeah. and that's why it's the first one in that therapy session. Yes. How do we restore the body? Yes. That's why I want to touch it because it's so important. Yeah. It just branches out to everything yeah. in a metaphorical but also literal sense with the vagus it, nerve. It's almost, it's almost philosophical, but it yeah, just yeah. explains it so well. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I mean, for anyone that's active with sports or exercise, is there anything else in this, you know, important, like in this factor of therapy that someone should, you know, consider? Mm. Yeah, 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 there? yeah. Like, because we started with breathing, but some people listening and watching might play sports, might exercise, some people might not, but therapy as a whole is so important. And you touch on so many parts in the pillar. Yeah. I just want to know, is there anything that yeah. you think people should know? Yeah. So this is something I, I advocate at the clinic, and this is ad something I advocate in general, and something that I, I hope people take away from reading the book, is that sure. in general, people have a very rigid body. Might not come to a surprise to you, right? Like People are just chronically stiff. Yeah. what I'm advocating for is that I want people to have more of an elastic based body so there's a chapter in the book called free energy do you remember that chapter so there's a section where, yes. where, where, where yes. we talk about using the body's natural elastic characteristic to move mm -hmm. right so connective tissue the stuff that we have here not just the muscle but the all this stuff right if you were if you were to pull it pull it if you let go, it snaps back, similar to an elastic, okay? Mm -hmm. So what free energy is and why it's important, not just for recovery because it prevents injury, but it's, it's useful for performance is because if you can teach the body to be more elastic-like in nature, mm -hmm. you put less of a dependence on the muscle to create movements, to create explosive action because the body just snaps and that doesn't uh, and yeah, that doesn't yeah. that doesn't cost your body energy. Do you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Yes. So the That's body's the body's all about survival and conserving calories, conserving energy. Yep. A lot of the times injuries come up is because we're taxing the body so much because we're running. We're running. This is me running. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're running. We're running. But we put okay. so much emphasis on using our calf muscles, using our hamstrings, using our quads, using all these muscles to create mm -hmm. the action of running that we're not really teaching our body how to be elastic like so the greatest runners that you see they're like rabbits when they run they're very springy and that's what more bodies need to be like to prevent injury yeah so my takeaway for the therapy section is that this whole therapy section is to teach people similar to like a, a mechanic mm -hmm. restoring a beautiful old sports car you can restore your body to be years younger by following the knowledge that you find in this therapy section, 
but the premise and the takeaway is elastic energy. Teach your body how to be how to be like a spring, mm -hmm. and your body will naturally start to settle down because your muscles are not going to be chronically tight. Yeah, you're going to be able to move and feel great and reap the benefits of being active without the soreness that comes with it. Interesting. I, I'm going to be getting into a lot of running this year. Uh, there you this go. summer for the first time in a long time. Beautiful. And I remember you had this YouTube video about explaining about jump roping and how uh, that helps you with preparing to run. Did your you, homework. I, well, <laughs> yeah, I found that video and I was like, this is so important. I have a skipping rope and I, I want to get into skipping yeah. to get ready for my body so I can take pressure off like the base of impact, my foot yeah. impact, right? And how that, so I just wanted to bring that up for myself and just yeah, you know, say, yeah, that's a, a is that kind that, of yeah, that's, this, that's, right? a, that's exactly that. So, I mean, just to quickly paraphrase that video, which is on YouTube if you want to watch it, <laughs> uh, Araya Health on YouTube. If you skip, a lot of the times, yeah. you can use that as, a, as an assessment and a way to teach your body how to be more like an elastic mm -hmm. that stretches and snaps yes. back. Yes. How do we do that? Is if you skip and you're making... You can hear it, exactly. It's flat-footed. Your body's taking that impact every single time. Yeah. And usually bodies that rely too much on muscle, you see a correlation between that and joint imp uh, chronic joint impact, strain, yes. and all that stuff. Yeah. So skipping, you can teach your body how to be like a sprint, just based, based off of how you make impact on the floor. Mm -hmm. And it's such an effective assessment tool mm -hmm. if you want to teach your body how to get started with running. Because running has a horrible, horrible track record of injuring people, but it's not running that's bad. It's how people's body react to running. Yes. Start with skipping. Yes. That's my advice to you. Yeah, I, I will. I'm excited to. <laughs> that's my advice to you. So for anybody that wants to get access to your book or just any of your services, where can they go to read more, to learn more about what you do? Yeah. All right, you guys. So if you guys want to follow me, uh, definitely follow me on Instagram. I want to start pursuing more YouTube is my, my next goal. Okay. Going back to that, me having a goal of being a TV star, right? Yes, yes. YouTube. I, I want to yeah, I wanna have uh, more videos up on YouTube. But if you're ever in the Scarborough area, uh, come say hi. Because not only will you find myself, but you'll find my staff there working. We offer everything from massage therapy, chiropractic, acupuncture, and everything in between to help you not only pursue fitness again, but get you feeling great. Awesome. And that's my message to you guys. And you guys have consultations. How, how does that work to get a consultation? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah. 50-minute uh, free consultation. If you have any questions as to how we can help you, or if you just want to talk, you want to figure out the right strategy for yourself, maybe you're being held back because of an injury. Maybe you don't know where to start because your history of exercising has been so... Horrible. <laughs> For all people. It's let's true. Let, let's okay. help you, right? We, we can definitely get you back on track to fitness, but using the platform of recovery to transition you back into fitness, yes. it just works time and time again. And I think we, we can help anyone and everyone, to be honest with you. Right on. Yeah. I have one more question. This uh -oh. is the last question I ask all my guests. Uh -oh. Just kind of open-ended yeah. uh, question for you to take wherever you want. Right. And it's, what sets your soul on fire? That's the question. Soul on fire. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm a very, very, very big fan of inspiration, and I'll explain. Okay. I like seeing quality of work. I like seeing people do really good, right? And what I mean by that, and something actually, you know what I really like about your channel? You do this thing with uh, the music. You post music Mondays. Yeah, I like that. Play this on Mondays. Yes. You know what? You know why I like that? It's because for me, music has a huge. Uh, influence on me in terms of if it's good music the, li the, the lyrics are good uh, the rhymes are good I love hip hop I love rap yeah, when it's yeah. really good stuff even if it's rap it makes me want to be a better therapist because how are they that great I want to be at that level in my mm -hmm. industry mm -hmm. so I consistently look for inspiration whether it's I, I find that I find the inspiration through your page and I see the fact that this guy's hustling like a, appreciate it. Like a beast <laughs> or, I, or I see someone accomplishing something yes um, I, I love it right and it, it, I mean to give you another example yeah my, my girlfriend she took me to see Jennifer Lopez two years ago and at the time I'm like five I gotta, gotta go see J-Lo I gotta go see J <laughs> and I'm not a fan of J-Lo to be honest with you like I was happy we won. Like time out with my with my with, with my wife. With, with I love spending time with her, but I wasn't happy going there. But here's the thing: I always look for inspiration, and okay. by the by the end of it, I was a huge fan. 
Yeah. She yeah. just murdered it. Yes. And by the end of it, I was yeah. listening to J-Lo tracks on the way home. <laughs> For the next month, I was just blasting her music. I was just so inspired. Yeah. That that's something that I, I consistently look for. Mm-hmm. So whenever I see someone doing good, good for, good for you, man. Yes, I love yes. this. And they, and they say, you know, if you, you'll, you'll never criticize someone. Um, that's if, if you're doing better than someone, you'll never criticize them. And so we should always look for people that are doing better than us and look there because that's going to bring us inspiration, right? Yeah. So yeah, I can't hate on that. It's just, I mean, just for myself, take it. I'm not, I'm not a hater like that. Yeah, it's it's yeah. It's, it's exactly that. It's fuel yeah. for myself because mm-hmm. I want to be at the top of my industry. Yes. And yes. seeing someone do great, damn, it drives me. I feel you. I, I can 100 percent relate. That's yeah. interesting. And I've never heard anyone say that answer. So I ask the question, and I always get something different. And that's oh, I see yeah. how that relates to you as well. And inspiration. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Well, do you have any questions for me before we head out, or anything to say? Because no, I think I'm this is great, man. Here. Damn, you you definitely have to uh, get me out in your uh, new studio when that opens. In the studio so, soon. When yes. is that happening? Um, trying to figure it out, but season three, we'll have the studio. Really? That's, that's the goal, yeah. Okay, season well, three. here's my question. What does that mean? Season two, go home. Go home. Uh, go home it just means to not only go home as in like a physical and like go <laughs> to your house, because that's kind of the theme of what we're going through right now. It just means to return to like the best version of yourself, like uh-huh. your home. It's oh, not just the okay. physical, it's kind of like a, the best version of yourself could be, you know, right, uh, emotionally... Right. Physically, mm. mentally, financially, spiritually. There's different ways to return to the best version of yourself. And a lot of the episodes on this season are different ways of doing that. This episode would be, uh, I think, physically a yeah. lot, mentally even. Yeah. And so I think, and I, think yeah, and I really like that. So teaching people, at least from this podcast, yeah. teaching people the, the, the basics, the foundation to their fitness. Yes. I like that. Exactly. So take, go back home to the basics. Exactly. There, there we go, go man. <laughs> All right. So thank you guys for watching and thank you so much for joining the podcast, Not man. That was awesome. Man. Yes. That was awesome. Me, All right. So guys, take care. Have a good day. Keep on vibing out. Peace, guys. All right, y'all. You made it to the end of the episode. How we feeling? How did you like it? If you did like it, you better like the video by now. Just show your support. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast, however you're watching or listening. And yeah, if you haven't followed Chris, go check out his Instagram. Tell him thank you. Message him. Such a great guy. It was such an honor to have him on my podcast. So shout out to Chris. And shout out to you guys for for listening to the podcast, for being here right now. So appreciate you so much. And uh, until next time, have a good day, okay? This has been Vibing Out with Texany. I'm your host, Texany, a.k.a. Mr. World Vibe, and I'm signing out. Peace.